Hey there guys, so today we're taking a look at Rust running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now we've taken a look at this game running on this system before, but that was before the DirectX 11 driver update that actually ended up boosting the performance on a large amount of DirectX 11 based games. So I had recently taken a look at this game running on the Ryzen 5 5600H on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC, and the performance in that blew my mind in comparison to what I had gotten on the 5500U before so I decided to revisit it to see if the 5600H is really just that much more powerful or if these drivers actually did something to boost the overall performance. Now here you're looking at the game running with the lowest in-game graphics settings at 1080p but we are at the stock 15 watt TDP of the chip itself and at this level of performance things that we're looking at here are pretty brutal. The performance in general is just bad as soon as you pull up any menus but if you look at the FPS as soon as we get back into the game itself it's still just slightly under a 30 FPS average. So in general, not a great result, but not too surprising considering that the 15 watt TDP is pretty limiting for an APU like this. Just as a comparison, the 5600H actually runs at a TDP of 35 watts on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC, and you can get systems that have it go all the way up to 45 or even 50 to 65 TDP. Now there are major diminishing returns when it comes to TDP, so don't expect something that has a TDP of, let's say, 50 5 watts to perform that much better than something that is 45 watts or even 35 watts. The thing that really matters the most almost all the time is that the GPU can hit its maximum clock speed. In this case right here, you can see that the GPU is almost 100% utilized, but the clock speed that we're reaching is nowhere near the 1800 megahertz that is its maximum clock speed. So that lets us know that the 15 watt TDP is very much limiting the GPU. And as you can see, the CPU itself is also not exactly reaching its boost clock staying at a base of 1.4 gigahertz, which is pretty slow. Of course, we can try to raise the TDP to see if that actually boosts our overall performance in this game. And by going with the 25 watt TDP, you can see here that we do get a nice boost in the 1% lows. There are averages aren't exactly at a great range, but you'll see now that the GPU is being properly utilized for the most part. It's still not locked at that 1800 megahertz clock speed, but it is boosting significantly closer to that. And it stays very, very close to that range for most of the time. And even the CPU itself is actually starting to do more. The reason that it was at such a low clock speed is because we were pretty much just fully GPU limited to the point where there was nothing for the CPU to do. Now we're still very much GPU limited as you can see that the CPU itself isn't really doing that much more work but you will see it now start to boost more because there are just more tasks for it to do because of this higher clock speed on the GPU. It's still not ideal and it's still not perfect but it is a welcome bump and it does show some of the major advantages that the 5600H had where the GPU has enough wattage that it can be maxed out while the CPU is able to do more because it's actually able to to just clock up higher and the IPC increase means that per clock it is just be able to do more because another limiting factor of the CPU is just the fact that these games aren't exactly super multi-threaded just because we have six cores and 12 threads doesn't mean that all six cores and 12 threads are being used by a game you might see that we're reaching around 40 percent CPU usage and that could just mean that a couple of cores are extremely maxed out and that's what's limiting everything else because you can also see that the GPU isn't exactly at a hundred percent utilization in general, though, the result that we're getting is pretty decent, though it's nothing remarkable. I really do not expect most people to want to play the game like this just because those 1% lows are dipping below 30 and our averages aren't exactly that much higher than 30. So there is a pretty noticeable difference between this and the B-Link SCR5 mini PC with the 5600H. But of course, we can also try to reduce the resolution to see if that will boost our performance. Now, going back down to the stock 15 watt TDP at 900p, you can see here that we actually do get a pretty noticeable increase in terms of the overall performance where our FPS average is now at 38 with our 1% lows being at 26. It means that the overall experience is significantly better and it is far more playable. It's still not the most ideal situation because the 1% lows are below 30, but you have to remember that those 1% lows really almost always just end up dropping because of the fact that anytime you open up a menu, your FPS is going to take a hit. When you're actually in the game itself, when you're actually just playing where it actually matters, 
matters. The performance is very, very consistent, as you can tell by the frame time chart. As you can see there, everything is pretty consistent. We don't see any major spikes or anything like that. It's certainly not the most ideal. You would want that to be as flat as possible. But considering that there aren't any major spikes or anything like that when we're actually roaming around the world and everything, it does mean that the experience here is very, very consistent. So this is one of those games where the 1% lows are a bit misleading. Now, if we raise the TDP up to 25 watts and we stay at 900p, the boost in performance really isn't that much more significant. We're still around the same range. Now, keep in mind that with everything that we've seen, the 1% lows are at the range that there are because as soon as you pull up any menu, you do take a pretty noticeable impact in terms of performance. So what you really have to pay attention to is the frame time charts. They are at least consistent enough. So it does mean that while you're actually playing the game, you're going to get an above 30 FPS experience most of the time. But it is one of those things where for a game like this, that might not exactly feel like the greatest experience ever. I was really hoping that these updated DX11 drivers were actually the magic bullet here that ended up saving the game itself on these APU systems. But it really just comes down to the IPC improvements that came with the 5600H as well as just its higher TDP that ended up giving us a really remarkable gaming experience in this game in comparison to what we have here. There are certainly improvements over where we were at before. The DX11 drivers did do some work here, but it wasn't enough to really change the overall experience and make it a groundbreaking improvement or anything like that. It was just able to boost things enough where it is now at a playable range, though it's not going to be anything where I would say that you're going to have a mind-blowing experience. I was blown away by the 5600H. I'm not necessarily blown away here. So welcome surprise that things actually are able to be played, but you're not going to be blown away by anything here. So anyways, I hope you guys found this quick look at Rust running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Interesting, useful, or entertaining. This is, of course, a revisit. And while there were some improvements here, nothing groundbreaking, nothing that's going to be a absolute game changer or anything like that. If you're someone that was looking to play Rust, it might just boost you over the edge where you're going to feel more comfortable playing it. But I could completely understand if this is just not your cup of tea in terms of performance. But anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one.